on issues of unemployment. Mm -hmm. I feel that uh, the youths have uh, taken to the digital uh, industry mm -hmm. to create uh, employments for themselves, to at least learn, earn something. But now you find that the government is taxing them, mm -hmm. is introducing taxes to the digital uh, avenues that the youths are trying to earn a living from them. Mm -hmm. So I feel the government should at least not tax these uh, digital uh, avenues. Mm -hmm. And also, the government should uh, lower the taxes on uh, private uh, investors mm -hmm. who would come and invest in our country and create job opportunities for our youths. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Madza, what other areas can the government invest in so as to ensure there is job creation within the country and of course move us away from depending on white collar jobs that we're normally waiting for once we finish universities. What other key areas that the government can invest in so that it can spur new jobs? Even as we speak on how we can uh, invest more, or that is the government can invest more so that it can create more jobs for the youths, mm -hmm. we first need to address a key problem that is addressing, that is facing us mainly as students, which is now on the new funding model, which the president said it's working. Mm -hmm. So to be very genuine with you and to the public, the model isn't working at all, mm -hmm. and it is very disadvantageous to most of the, of the students. Mm -hmm. Up to now, as you're speaking, we have most of the first years who, 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 uh, who enrolled during this uh, uh, academic year. Most, most of them have not deferred because they can't afford the school fees that are to be set place. Because if you look at the, uh, at the, at the model, it's been divided into three categories. Mm -hmm. That is the scholarships, the loans, and the household contributions. So we are having a scenario whereby uh, the household contribution is maybe 30% of the total school fee. So if you qualified for a high-end cause like, like let's say medicine, mm -hmm. and the cost, it's, uh, it's, cost, it's uh, about 612,000. So if you take 30% of that, that's about 220,000. Mm -hmm. And you see most of these students come from needy backgrounds whose parents have never even touched a bundle of 100,000 100, shillings. So how, do, how does the government expect such parents to afford such an such, uh, amount? So it is high time the government first address this, uh, this model because it's one of the main reasons why us as students we were on the streets. It was one of the, of the main reasons. Mm -hmm. And uh, I can tell you for a fact that uh, it's, a boil, it's a boil that is getting bigger. And come September, if the government won't have addressed this issue, mm -hmm. we'll be back to this same, same scenario if they won't listen to our cries. Mm -hmm. And back to the matter of uh, jobs, op opportunities, I admire how my good friend has said that indeed the government should stop taxing our youths who have engaged themselves in the digital space, which is an, it's a, it's a creative platform for them to air their views and for them to entertain those who want to be entertained and then they earn some, some small monies. Mm -hmm. The government should also look in other avenues that can uh, empower these youths. We saw that there was the youth fund that was uh, giving small loans and small finances to youths who, who had business ideas. But we saw that the government slashed its budget to close to half, went away. So it's high time they revived it so that those youths who have ideas can be able to access this uh, fund and then they can empower themselves by financing their businesses. Mm -hmm and even getting more platforms through calling investors who can give jobs to us to be a great milestone for us as youths. Okay. Yes. And Moses, we're talking about how to relook. We know we have the competency-based curriculum, which is the CBC that goes all the way to the high, higher education, which yet I don't know if it has been implemented uh, to effect till to date. But the issue is, should our curriculum now change to address some of the concerns that are being raised right now? Yeah, thank you, my brother Abdi Aziz. Uh, first, uh, I admire what my brothers have just said. Before I come to your question, three areas. Mm -hmm. We have a Kenya Youth Employment Opportunities Project. Mm -hmm. We have the Youth Development Enterprise Fund. Mm -hmm. And we have the Ajira uh, Digital Platform. That's where really we call on our government to maximize on those three areas so that our youths who are currently on the streets can be able to leverage on that maximally mm -hmm. and, and improve their <coughs> activities. Come be, coming back to your question of, on CBC, mm -hmm. uh, we have seen this is a model of education that has been introduced in our country. Uh, some of us, we are parents of uh, these young kids. We have seen pretty much well, we can say, the CBC mm, model is not a bad idea mm -hmm. because it instilled the aspect of our kids being innovative in a way, taking issues into their own hands, practical. Mm -hmm. So I can really say, C to me, CBC is not a bad idea. It just needs to be reconfigured. The government needs to look... Uh, 
at the potential areas of CBC so that our kids will be able to maximize it and we get value for money out of it mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. allow me to give me at least two minutes each given that we are running out of time let me start with you peter yeah maybe to add on uh, what you are talking about uh, and creation of job opportunities mm -hmm. i feel like uh, the government should also focus on uh, sports activities and nurture talents we have our kenyans who are athletes they are competing with the, uh, the third world countries so if the government can at least na nurture sports mm -hmm. and talents we can create jobs for our youth. Look at the football, footballers in our country. Look, uh, look at the footballers outside the country, how much money they earn through sports activities. Mm -hmm. So I feel also the government, like the money that uh, is being uh, embezzled, they can create, uh, they can build stadiums. Mm -hmm. And we can, the, the, our youth can use the, uh, the stadiums for sports activities. And also on uh, CBC, we have seen uh, like where I come from, Biasharawad. I have seen the, like the area MCA there with the government, uh, with the governor. They have uh, constructed a modern new ECD. This is uh, uh, a way of creating uh, creating a more more uh, more conducive environment for children to learn in. Mm -hmm. And from there, they can be taught on how they can they can uh, venture into digital uh, avenues as they are at tender ages. So they grow up knowing that. I don't I need to depend on uh, becoming a lawyer to earn a living. I can also go and do, uh, uh, earn uh, my living through other activities. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's all. Yes, thank you, first of all, for the opportunity. And uh, I'll only address two issues as my parting shot. One is on the leadership that we are currently at. What we need to see as a people or, or as a nation is a justice for what we've lost as a nation. Political justice, those who have been responsible for us getting where we are right now. These are the crooked CSs and the leaders who we elected. We must see them, we must see the president take action. Otherwise, it will be the, it will be the same, same monkeys running this business and mm -hmm. we won't be ready for that. Mm -hmm. Use yes. palatable words, you're on air. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. Then I will, like we need to see the, the president take action mm -hmm. on these leaders who have really brought us to this mess that we are in. Because we have farmers like in Zombo who are planting mangoes and other uh, crops who need fertilizers, mm -hmm. but if you see now some leaders selling to them fake fertilizers and then they're still in office, it really makes us lose trust and uh, lose confidence in the government. So the government really has an uphill task for him to regain the trust of the citizens who have felt that he he really let us down. Mm -hmm. And and second, it's on the funding model, a, a country that cannot educate that cannot educate its people cannot feed its people. And where we are right now, we are at a great cap crisis mainly as students because this model is really affecting us so much and there's a huge outcry of our students even right now as they are in their homes and in their holidays and they're waiting to see the government to enact and to make changes into, into this model because the, our parents are now budging themselves into loans and loans as they, as they look forward towards paying our, our school fees and you have most of our students dropping out because they can't afford this school fee and you have some deferring from these high-end courses that they qualify to to small causes that can that they can afford. Mm -hmm. So if really we want to progress as a nation, let us invest clearly into education because it's really what can propel us to, to the next stage of life and, uh, and, and, and to the next stage as mm -hmm. a nation. Mm -hmm. And uh, to my fellow Gen Zs, uh, let us m uh, maintain peace, but also not forget why we are here and also we need an end goal to all this that we are doing. I'm sure there are, there are some leaders somewhere who are trying to impose to us doctrines for their own benefit because they know we are agitated. So let us be wise as we, as we engage and have an end goal in what we want uh, so that we can't be used as pawns because if we say somebody must go, then who, who else is to come? Okay. So thank, you. thank you, my brother. As a parting shot, speaking as a leader, a youth leader from a minority community mm -hmm. from Ilchamus, speaking on behalf of the rest of the youths of the minority communities in Kenya. I want really to underscore on three main issues as my closing remarks. First, from where I sit, I want to thank the government of Kenya because from the initial stages, they showed a lot of goodwill, political goodwill, because as we speak, we have a unit, a full unit, speaking on behalf of the minority communities in Kenya. 
under his office, the office of the president. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I come to the issues of youths, we know a huge basket of minority youths have been left on the margin of our social, economic, and political rights of this country. Mm -hmm. They have not been able to enjoy what the rest of the country is enjoying. And so it is my humble plea to call for our government now that the youths of our country have come out, our lead leaders have taken necessary steps to listen to them. I want to speak on behalf of the minorities that our president and the leadership to now move in speed to put in place policies, legal frameworks, and you know, so that this minority, which is a special interest group in our constitution, can be able to even get funding from the government, okay. to even get, you know, representation. We have seen uh, the Election Act 2012 Amendment Bill currently in Senate, mm -hmm. which talks about the need for the special interest groups to be factored in. I call upon the government when that is being implemented, let them consider the minority okay. in terms of nomination so that they get to present you at the highest level. Thank okay. you so much. That is our cue. Thank you so much, Moses Olekachike, a youth representative on minorities and marginalized communities. Mazao Roch and Degwa, the president of the University of Nairobi's Students Association. Thank you so much for coming in. And finally, Peter Mwangi Kimani, a youth representative from Biashara Wadriru. Thank you so much for coming in, gentlemen. That is our cue. And in the second hour, we'll be conversing what you've just witnessed at the Kenyatta International Convention Center. Don't go too far. That conversation is coming up next. <laughs>